Hello movie makers. Today we're looking at colour correction and I'll be using a three-way colour corrector to change the look, the colour of some shots in some scenes. The three-way colour corrector is quite a common device. Uh, it's common to uh, Final Cut, Edius, Avid, various things like that. First of all we'll be matching pictures from two different cameras looking at the same scene. The, the scene we'll be looking at is from I'm Losing You. Fee, you have eaten anything. Are you alright? No, yeah, my, my phone rang again in the middle of the night. Was it him? Yeah, but I think it was off his brother's number. Yeah. So I've blocked that as well. Yeah. And then that buzzing thing happened again. Notice the colour changes. Auntie's shots are cool. Fiona's are warm. You don't believe me, do you? Well, do you think I'm going crazy? No, no, you're not crazy. But you've had a lot is of the room white? Surprising that you're having bad dreams. Look, well, or cream. The, day, and I wasn't then. the timeline shows two video tracks, one track per camera. Fiona's shots are on top. Auntie's are below. It's a good idea to lay the different cameras down on different tracks in this way if you expect to have to change the colours because it makes colour correction much easier. It would be much better in this scene if the shots were the same colour because changes sort of snag the eye and distract you. The question is which one is the right colour? Well, basically, it's whichever one we say it is. There's no need to match reality. In fact, that's impossible. Personally, I prefer the colour of Fiona's pictures. They look warmer. And in the story, she's in a warm and welcoming place. So I shall change Auntie's wide shot to match Fiona's. Looking closely at the timeline, we can see that Auntie's camera was a DSLR. And up here we can see Fiona was on Andy's camera. Both perfectly good cameras and both set more or less correctly, but they just don't match. A word of caution, before you start changing colours, you must have a standard to match your coloured pictures to. In this case, one of the pictures is OK, so we'll leave it alone and only change the other one. If both pictures were wrong, we would need an ideal to match them both to. You need to realise that you can't hold an ideal in your head because between your ears you've got the best colour corrector in the world. If you stare at any picture for a while, your personal colour corrector will correct it without even you being aware of it and you'll lose your reference. We'll only be correcting colours within this scene. Back to the timeline. We've decided to correct Auntie's shots. Luckily, looking at the timeline, we see that in fact, we only have to do it once because her shot runs all the way through the scene. It's the one underneath. If we change that, wherever it appears on screen, it'll be correct. I'm going to use the three-way color corrector now. I'll find it in the effects palette. There it is. All I do is just simply drag it from there and drop it on Auntie's shot in the timeline. Now if I look at the clip information, it says three colour corrector. And if I click on that thing there, up will come the control panel. Woohoo! Marvellous. Don't be scared of this control panel. It's really surprisingly simple. As you can see, there are three coloured discs. And they control three different bits of the picture the blacks, the greys and the whites. In the middle of each disc there's a dot which is like a joystick. You have to move it around on the disc and if you move it to a red part of the disc it'll make the pictures redder in that part of the picture. It's an old idea. I used a device like this in the 70s to control the colour of film at ATV. Can you see the three joysticks? So what does it look like when you change the joysticks? Here's a simple picture. It's just black and white and grey. So now I'll change its colour using the joysticks. 
I'll move the blacks to blue, the greys to red and the highlights to green. Let's get back to Auntie's picture. We need to compare it with Fiona's directly. So I'll temporarily split Fiona's in the upper track so we can see both pictures in the same monitor. This way round you can see the door in both shots. It's the same door, it should be the same colour. Now I'll adjust the greys and the whites and the blacks until the pictures look the same. And there you are. Fee, you've hardly eaten anything. Are you alright? Yeah, my, my phone rang again in the middle of the night. Was it him? Yeah, but I think it was off his brother's number. Good. So I've blocked that as well. Good. And then that buzzing thing happened again, and it was right by my window. How could you see it in the dark? Well, it, it's got lights on. You don't believe me, do you? Well... You think I'm going crazy? No, no, you're not crazy, but you've had a lot of trouble and it's not surprising that you're having bad dreams. Look, Well, I seen it during the day and I wasn't dreaming then. OK, look, why don't you let me take the day off work and stay with you? I can easily call in sick. No, don't do that. Well, at least we'll sleep in the same bedroom tonight, OK? We've got to get to the bottom of all this, this flying saucer buzzing thing, OK? Yeah, OK. Thanks, Auntie. And Fee, promise me you'll eat something. Yeah, mm? promise. No time to eat, Auntie. Now, let's see how cameras, sorry, people, get things wrong some of the time. First, we'll look at something colourful, then we'll tweak the camera a bit. This is the camera I'm using for these tests, Panasonic SD900. The Panasonic is pointing at a set of pastels illuminated by daylight and its colour balance is set to daylight. So the pastels should look pretty much the right colour. If we set the Panasonic to cloudy as opposed to sunny, Oh, well the yellows and greens have got even brighter, so that is cloudy sky. If we set it to artificial light, it makes everything look blue. That's because daylight, which we are in, is blue compared to artificial light. So if it's looking for artificial light and it sees daylight, it sees it as blue. But what about different sorts of artificial light, especially in the dark? This is the back of my house. The camera is set to sunlight, daylight. The room at the top in the centre is lit by a tungsten light. I had a job finding a bulb that was tungsten. The one to its left top is lit by a pure LED ceiling light, described only as white. The two windows lower left are lit by fluorescent tubes, triphosphors, and they give very good rendering of green vegetables. <laughs> Lower right is lit by warm LEDs. It's a bit confused by the fact there's a red curtain in there which makes it look even warmer, but if you look at the right hand panes you'll see that they are sort of creamy white. I'll now set the camera to artificial light. Uh, the centre top room, which is the tungsten, now looks pretty neutral. But the, the room below, the two left-hand windows, looks very green. That's the one lit by fluorescence. Bottom right, warm LEDs, looks slightly less warm than before. Top left, standard white LEDs, looks as white as ever. Now back inside for a walkabout. Welcome to my very untidy house. This is the sitting room. Let's walk into the hall. That's a white door on the right. Here's another white door, but it doesn't look the same colour. The sitting room is lit entirely by daylight. The hallway is lit by LED lights described as warm white. This is a white door in the sitting room. This is a white door 
In the hallway, they look different colours. I can walk from the sitting room into the hall without really noticing a colour change. But look at the colour of my face in here. Now we'll switch the 900 to automatic white balance, AWB. In this mode, the camera will correct the white balance all the time, even while it's running and while you're running about. And now we'll try going from the sitting room to the hall again. This time the camera is set to intelligent auto, which means that everything's automatic, including white balance. Automatic white balance is invoked. The sun's a bit brighter than it was earlier. Now let's take a walk past this white door, which looks white, and into the hall, which looks rather a warm white. However, automatic white balance will begin to take effect. It's a bit slow. Aha! It's now decided that the stairs are white. And if we turn to look at this door, it's decided that's white. Now let's turn back to the sitting room. Oh, it's rather blue, because of course the camera had reset its automatic white balance on the LEDs in the hall. And now it's confronted with daylight. So automatic white balance does do what the human eye and brain can do, but it's not very quick. So basically, beware of having everything in auto. This can have interesting effects when we're out shooting. There's more to it than that. It's, we've never tried it. We were frightened of it and we knew it would change the world, but now that I've used it, it can't be uninvented, so there's no way back for anyone. But if you've never tried it before and never been used, how did you know it would work? I didn't. Ooh, Fiona's got a funny colour. She's a different colour at the beginning than the end of the clip. The reason for that is, before the shot started, the camera, in automatic white balance, had been staring at the green wall, and due to automatic white balance, had decided to make that white by turning everything a bit pink. When Fee and Julian's faces appeared on screen, they were already pink. And so the automatic white balance tried to get it back to white by turning them green. See, this automatic white balance is not as clever as the colour corrector in your head. Now we're giving the colour corrector in your head a workout. Stare at the cross. Don't look away. Keep looking at the cross, think of nothing else, look at the cross. And now, in the count of three, oh, sorry, I lied about the three. You may have seen, for an instant, the black and white picture in colour. The reason for that is, when you were staring at the cross, the opposite colours to those in the picture were on the screen. And your colour corrector in your head will have tried to colour correct those back to a neutral white or grey. So when they were taken away and the picture was presented in black and white, the colours already prepared in your head appeared for an instant on the black and white picture. See, you can't trust the colour corrector in your head. You don't always have to use a colour corrector for serious things. You can use it to do something you couldn't do any other way. So, um, how do you provide the light of a flying drone on someone's face when the drone was actually flying 25 miles away and you had no lights to shine on their face? Fiona is lit in this scene by the colour corrector, not by any lights at all. The green lights on the drone were mimicked by 
turning her whole picture green and then masking everything except the bits of her face which would be struck by the light. Looked quite good, I think. And now for news of a sad failure. We used a lot of cameras on I'm Losing You and here are pictures from four of them. The faces, the bricks, the grass, the sky, everything matched, but I could not get the colour of the car to match. Maybe next year if I buy a Da Vinci.